Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Christian Buckley. This is the uh, N, N team, cast of hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours, just kicking off another 60-minute AMA. So ask us anything about Microsoft products and services. And we've got myself, we've got Hal. Got There's yeah. Mr. Riz. We've got Joel Olison. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hello, friends. Hi. Good to see you guys. Right. That's all going live. Yeah, I was just saying that. Uh, so the the it was it was burning, but uh, apparently started raining uh, raining last night. So put out the tent fires, um, but the hills. So Traverse Mountain up above Lehigh and Highland, Utah, the hills black, and over the the mountain that are that's behind uh, on the west side of Utah Lake behind Saratoga Springs is also burnt to a crisp. Um, wow. But I don't believe any ha homes were destroyed thanks to the rain overnight. But the wind was just crazy yesterday. And uh, so there, it, it just kept watching throughout the day. It was 0% contained, 0% contained. Like, what are those people doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, the one we've got here has been going on for three and a half weeks. It's now yeah. consumed over 100,000 acres and is about 45% contained. It's... I believe the largest single fire that we've had in Pima County. Yeah, and for those Hal shared last week that if you are in the greater vicinity the the of the uh, southwest and have s'mores on hand, that's where you want to take your business. Yeah, just 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 set up a head out into the into the end of the. The desert and set you up a little camp and get your marshmallows and weenies on sticks and the, the fire will be by presently. Sounds great. <laughs> always Christian, always thinking about the people. It's <laughs> it's it's a trait that, that few have. You're always thinking about the people and your stomach. It's yeah. it's awesome. That's right. Yeah, then it, somebody did a uh, I guess it was the uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, fire control people did a uh, a map of the fire which you could overlay on top of the city of Tucson and it consumes the entire city. The entire city. Wow. wow. Crazy. Well, fire talk is great. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk you, some... What else is on yeah. fire? Technology. How do you, how do you, what's this. your recipe for a s'mores? Yeah. For a good s'mores? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I do like the people who are creative and add cookies instead of just the graham cracker. You know, there's some... Or the uh, the ones from Australia, the um, little little chunks one? of uh, kangaroo in there, or what's different? About? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a, a specific Australian cookie that's like mm -hmm. a wafer that's covered in chocolate. What's that one called? Tim Tam. Tam Tams. Tam Tams make uh, great s'mores. I'm just, sure if we have any Aussies on, I'm sure they would go crazy right now. Skewer it and stick it over a flame and. No, 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 no. You still use marshmallows, but it has built-in chocolate into the graham cracker experience. Yeah. It's like a built-in s'more. I love that we're all trained to, to refer to things as experiences. <laughs> what was that thing that that has been uh, marshmallows at the grocery store that had the uh, chocolate chunks already inserted into them? So all you have to do is heat up the marshmallow and you melt the chocolate inside or, it. Or not heat it up. Yep. It's always that option. That's true. Yeah. True. Or if you're looking for a more personal experience, you can see how I did that. You can actually get your own chocolate chips individually or just or just melt chocolate aside and sort of drizzle it over. That works. Yes. Oh, dip, dipping. Yeah, that dipping is, the marshmallows. Uh, oh, yeah. That does not there. suck. Excellent. Works. Well, if you're watching on the live stream, uh, no, this isn't starting. some, like, poor, poor man's cooking show. No, this is... Uh, yeah, we're, we're actually here to talk uh, technology, so if you have any questions about Microsoft products or services, um, I do have a couple. There's some questions that have been posted over the last couple days uh, out on the, so the uh, Cloud 365, uh, Office 365, as well as Microsoft Teams pages. Um, so uh, let's kick things off. Now, we've, we've had quite a few questions I've seen, we've discussed here over the last several weeks performance related stuff. So I've got a couple performance things. Um, and then there's always the the licensing questions that come in. Um, so here's kind of a generic question. I thought that we could talk around this. 
we could answer it as well as then talk around the topic, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, so I think we should talk around it. Yeah. I think Taurus, much I know. I know. Experience for everybody. Taurus says, uh, could you help me with the, the, the process to remove an Office 365 license and be able to use it on another PC? That's usually a matter of uh, going up to your account uh, in Microsoft and uh, telling it that you don't use that PC anymore and then just simply installing the license on a different machine. Yep. And they're showing. That's how I've done. Yeah. I think that's in the personal settings as well. We have to deactivate it. And that's that's where a lot of people get tripped up because it, it sounds like it should be something that's controlled in admin and it's it's not. Yeah, if you're talking about Office 365, yeah, on the it, the personal side. The other difficulty there is that you have to remember what you've named your devices, your machines. Um, and, and so, which doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal, but I've got like the, uh, the, the, the license where I've got, you know, the five devices, four are mine, one of my kids. Uh, and I, I know the name of my workstation. I couldn't remember which one is which on the, on the laptops as the kids are using them. Um, so that's something to go and refamiliarize yourself with that you're deactivating the right versions. Yeah. <laughs> I found that I like to, to name all my machines, not this one. <laughs> and, then, and then it's super clear in those scenarios what you need to do. That's right. You've got like two machines, Christian. <laughs> two? What are you talking about? See how I gave the smart response and you got blamed for it? That was great. Two or three. <laughs> I'm going to get blamed for anything. Well, the other side of it, so that's when we're talking about Office. If you've got your, of course, if you're talking about, and it just says 365 license, if you're talking about um, Office 365, Microsoft 365 licensing, then that is within, it's not the personal uh, you know, uh, setting, it's within the admin experience and go into the users and you can remove that or uh, you know, delete that user or... Uh, and remove those licenses and then reassign those. So depending yes. on what you're asking for, two different places to go. Yeah. And as a user, if you go to office.com, you click on your name, you can get you can get them from there as a personal install. Like where you see the install, that's often as well where you'd go in to see what what it's is assigned. Hey Joel. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? It's going. Who said that? But as well, it's, it's personal devices, which also includes phones. It used to be your phone was one of the devices, and now it's not. Like You can add on lots of mobile devices. Let me do this. Oh, so here's a question that just came in. Randall's asking, what caveats can one expect when migrating to Office 365 with an AD Forest domain that doesn't match your Exchange SMTP address? Uh, he says, we can add an alternate UPN, but will that affect user experience in the long long run? Eric, there you go. Uh, talking experiences, so. There you go. And long run, which is which is me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer this one to Sean because the, the face... <laughs> oh, I just need medical attention. Or he's really not liking this question. Uh, yeah, um, alternate UPNs are. <sighs> yes, you can use them. They are notoriously problematic for certain things. Um, but you know, if you've got a domain that doesn't line up with the way your exchange is implemented, I. I'm afraid I don't have any great advice there. How's the Outlook MVP? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the bouncing deferral game. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I, I can't so much help with that. Unfortunately, me either. I, 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 would, I would say that uh, most... Most of those situations, there are ways of figuring them out. Thank you for helping I mean, and being yeah. unhelpful at the exact same time, Joel. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those ones where it's like, we need to actually see it. You know, yeah. being able to just kind of like 
it kind of looks like this. Well, I need to kind of see what it looks like. And because yeah. a lot of it is ends up being routing, you know, it's, it's like, did you actually name your domain the thing that makes it hardest? <laughs> Or is it one where there is a way, like the subdomain kind of path is a lot easier to work with than those top-level domains when there's a conflict with the top-level domain. That's why a lot of the forests are corp, because they're a lot easier to work with. Yeah. When but in the outside world, it's just it's, it's mapping. When you're yeah. talking alternate UPNs, life is not good. No. Just going back for a second to Joel's comment about there must be a solution for that. Uh, Joel would also like to announce some breaking news. Tonight it will get dark, and then tomorrow it will be lighting. There you go. We're all on the same page. Just to be clear, are we all pro breathing and air and and drinking of water? Are those things that we can all agree on as well as just? Jeez. Excellent. All right. Talking about name mapping, I do have a comment. We, we we say Office 365, we say Microsoft 365. I, I do think that we should just start using Microsoft 365 for all that stuff. Like, I've noticed Microsoft is, it's not just a licensing thing anymore. It seems like it's just go Microsoft 365. Yeah. Anybody I, else noticing that? Yeah. I, the left was pretty no, much just a branding no, thing, not a, not a skew thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're beyond. I I rarely now see Microsoft stuff that actually says Office 365. Although it's, true. it's still logo. out there, they're still updating. But yeah, yep. true. But dealing with customers, um, they're not on the fast track. No pun intended. All the time. Um, so Office 365, and you say Microsoft 365, they may not have gotten the memo. Yeah, I've, I switched all my presentations over to Microsoft 365, and then, of course, when I get to the slide that says Office, I just say Microsoft. <laughs> I just opened it, up the, it's the, interesting. I just like, opened well, up the folder here so I can things. leverage this later, guys. So apologies for not having this ready to go, but if it'll go anytime now, there, now is it ready? All right, thank you, Stream Deck, for being. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Four hundred and fifty dollars later, we have our boom. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Anybody got sorry. an air horn? Sorry, Joel. Sorry to interrupt you. For that was no, no, that no, was no. an attempt at hitting the button that says rim shot, and then it didn't work. So. <laughs> rim shot for the rim shot. <laughs> Still up. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you're pushing it from the look on your face. I know. <laughs> All right. Joel, so anyway, sorry to interrupt. You were starting to say if yeah. you can remember. <laughs> no, in fact, um, so this whole Office 365 versus Microsoft 365 battle is over. Microsoft has declared victory as Microsoft 365. Um, biggest comment or, or one of the comments is, it's interesting that we don't have a logo for something that seems to be pushed so hard. Um, one product, as an example, is like we say we say Office 365 Groups, but even Microsoft, even Office 365 Groups, if you actually search on both Bing and its competitor, you would actually see that it uh, it shows up as Microsoft 365 Groups on both sides. Hmm. The logo thing is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I don't understand why they haven't made well, us a logo. If you could, can see. That's the groups. I don't know. It's too blurry, but the the uh, let me point to it right here and see if that clarifies it. But right there, uh, is it coming through? Uh, in the MS app. Anyway, graveyard. yeah. Sorry, it's sort of. But there's an icon. So there, you know what? I, I can share the image um, and p paste this. But it's a uh, yeah. There's actually there was a logo for groups for the app. So there was actually an icon created for that product. What? If you search on it, you can you can barely find it. But I'm not sure if that's what you wanted to show there. But all I need now is your your CVV number. So if you could just tell me that, I, I got all the other numbers you were showing. Just missing that. <laughs> hmm. Well, interestingly, if you if you log into the Office portal right now, as I just did, 
in two separate places, it clearly says on the first page, Office 365. Yeah. That's the complaint that uh, people are saying. It's like with all the rebranding, it's like, well, there it, it's still appearing in a number of prominent locations. So Microsoft needs to go and get those fixed. Yeah, the portal's kind of in your face, so. Yeah. Well, here's another question. Um, so, uh, and this is an interesting, and I, and I don't know that there is an answer that's going to satisfy the, the requester here, but I think it's an interesting discussion. So Darren asks, he says, so now that we're working from home, my boss finally needs to know what I do all day. Is there a way I can generate a report from Outlook showing emails sent and tasks completed on a given day? So I'm trying to keep track manually, but that seems like Stone Age technology. Um, yeah, so there's some of the feedback saying, like, what kind of, like, task Nazi do you work for that you have to report on everything that you're doing from home that you're wanting to pull a report? So that aside, uh, and personal feelings about, you know, here here is clearly a manager that has not managed people working remotely before. Um, that should be, because the right answer is, you focus on the outcomes, not on the every single thing a person's doing or not doing over the course of the day. If you agree to and have measurements around the outcomes, what you're trying to achieve at the end, who the hell cares whether it takes 10 steps to get there or three steps and how many emails are sent and how much time in meetings versus emails and all those kinds of things. But So generally speaking, I'd say this is, there's a couple things that, what was it, what was the name of the person, Darren? Yes. Hi, Darren. Eric here. Um, there are a couple of things that, that Darren said that, that are a bit of, a, of obviously concern. I mean, I love how you you make it a more personal experience. I, I'm, I I'm trying that. to. I'm, I'm taking notes. It's really because I, I, I need a fireplace. fireplace. <laughs> so, Darren. <clears throat> I love how he phrases the question. Now that I'm working from home, my boss wants to know what I do all day. So, which, of course, begs the question, well, what did you do when you were in an office? And you could see your boss. Did you not complete tasks then? And what was the process for doing so? Um, you know, I kind of think of this as I, I do MVP stuff where you know I, I tag things that I do in the MVP community as such, and then I can do a search or run a report on those items and it all comes up. And then when it comes to renewal time, you put in all that stuff and it's pretty seamless to do because of course, no one actually does it as it happens. Um, in terms of emails and how you want to, to, to consolidate those into some sort of report, um, that's a different conversation. You could do it by day and just sort of, you know, send them a, a ream of paper. Um, but I would definitely go the Buckley way and, and focus on outcomes. And one way you can do that too is that look as far as tools. If your manager likes it, go and if you've got Teams up and running, build a, a planner board and compile all of the tasks, all the things that are happening on a daily basis. And any new requests come in, you can actually you know grab those emails from your manager and drop them in a task. You can uh, you know be as explicit in the descriptions around each of the different items. And as those are completed, they're all stored, and so you can. Um, you know, share that that task out. And they can the manager can see in real time. Hey, this is exactly what I'm working on. Here's what I have prioritized. Here's what I have. You can have a today, tomorrow, this week, next month buckets. You can keep it very simple. So, you know, you have a a, a real time or near real time um, view into everything that you're working on. So then, yeah. then, then the manager could check up on you throughout the day, anytime, multiple times. Fact, let, me give, let me give him a, 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 a way to like take what we're talking about. And in, in, in fact, I think of this as imagine a power app or imagine creating a list, one of these new lists that uh, we'll, be t we'll be working with soon and creating a flow such that all you have to do is email whatever you're doing and it ends up on this list. Um, and, uh, and then basically you're, you're building out the report that goes out weekly. And then having a Power BI chart that at any time he can go and see, here's the activities and create some cool graphs on it and uh, just to make it be something that you just, you know, send stuff over when you want to 
or drag and drop stuff on, however you want to build it, but just make it something that is cool and shows the tech and is something that, you know, makes you feel good about what you're doing. Like, how many people are on Scrum teams or Kanban, but those Kanban boards and the idea of capturing, here's what I'm working on, here's what I've accomplished, you could easily create your own Kanban style experience as well, where it's like, hey, this think about it once a week, here's the stuff I want to accomplish this week, and move the stuff you've accomplished into the I've done this, and it's a good way for you to organize what you're doing and also let somebody else know. And you can keep those as as granular or as as you know big as you want. You get to decide what size those T-shirts are and what you care about. What's worth What's worth saying? Good point. Yeah, I think there are. Um... There, there are some other tools that are out there that integrate in that that have that are much more advanced than what Planner provides that can do some of those things where you could you could set up, uh, you know, I, I'm not attempted to do this, but I'm I, you, I, you, I'm sure can go in and set something up as Joel describes, where you can then email in and have it create a task, a line item within a plan. I know that there are the third-party tools that work, that integrate with Office 365, sorry, Microsoft 365, um, that integrate in, but uh, have that Kanban model, but advanced features that enable you to do that. Um, Trello is a great example of that. Um, but you have uh, um, these other tools that are out there. You can go and automate that. So you could have the manager, any task, any requests, automatically show up on this list you can then go in and okay that was just an email there's not an ask there weed those things out delete them from the list but then have a running uh total and i was just thinking uh joel that you know based on when those emails are sent to when you hit complete on that task you know that's data that's all captured that you can then go build a report on as well. But there are these other more advanced tools that allow you to go in and do that that kind of uh, time tracking, and it's so that you can go in and and as you 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 have to be maybe it's a better fit for like an operations organization, a support organization, where you are you have somebody that is doing the triage and new requests that are coming in so that you can flag them. You can say, here, this is a performance related issue. This is a, a project management. This is a you know governance type issue. Flag them um, differently because um, there's still some uh, that triaging, some some massaging of those requests that need to happen. Uh, it's a massaging experience, Eric. Um, I'm not touching that. Yeah. Did you guys... Do you, you guys know, pay attention to the My Analytics reports? Mm. See, that's that, and yeah. that's where some people responded as well as the the My Analytics. And part of the problem with My Analytics, I think we talked about this last week, um, when those were launched, some of the first requests that were made were people say, "I want to see this for my team," and Microsoft pushed back and said, "No, this is you. you it can't be a manager who manages five people." And can then see this performance really this activity for those five people. It, it when it's a, a team of a, a certain size, we can anonymize that and provide you this generic data. But it's not meant to be tracking on an individual. Which is not to say you couldn't share those my analytics reports with your manager. If I think about um, my my phone, you know the uh, the weekly report that you get that says how much time you spend on your phone and what apps you use. I don't. I don't think I would ever send that to my manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only like, yeah. I spend way. Well, the other thing is, I I absolutely spend a lot of time on my phone. You know, my wife can attest to that. But you know, when you're getting the report that says, "Hey, I've been on the phone for nine hours or something," and you're you're looking at how much time it is on various social medias, it's like, okay, well, I can kind of fuzzy say a lot of this is work. For me, but um, you know, it's it, it's interesting trying to figure out is it how much of this time, like in email as an example, e the fact that you're in Outlook, how much of that time should you be spending in Outlook versus you shouldn't be spending in Outlook? I I don't know that management understands productivity as it relates to 
how much time you're in Word versus Outlook versus Excel or, you know, that that kind of jazz. Well, and, and that's something that you know, I look at those emails that, that came in and, and I, it's it's kind of interesting to me. But part of the problem with the analytics, it says, oh, hey, you have all this free time. Well, the way that I use my calendar, I may not be in meetings with other people, but I block out time to work on specific projects. Because I've got other automations that are out there. I don't want somebody scheduling a meeting in the middle of when I know I need to be focused on complete this deliverable. Yeah. But unfortunately, that does not show up the right way within my analytics. It looks like I'm doing absolutely nothing. Um, and, and so I'm not getting as much usage. And it's probably, I just need to go in and change the way that I'm uh, logging, blocking out that time. Um, and maybe there's a different way that I can report on it so that I'm seeing more useful data out of the uh, my analytics. Maybe I need to be... Invite your other Christian Buckley account. That way it's with another person. <laughs> Increases productivity. <laughs> can... And you're continually talking to someone who's answering you, which is nice. Yeah. Yes. It's when you start to actually hear that other voice, that's when you have to be concerned. <laughs> You've been working from home, sitting alone in your basement bunker too long. Yes. Yes, indeed. Except mm -hmm. the voices in my head always have great answers for the problems that I have, so... <laughs> It's a different experience, Eric. <laughs> Christian, you just lie here on the couch, buddy. Tell me all your problems. We'll solve them for you. Uh, hey, That's Le a scary thought. L Liam just reported in <laughs> from the uh, Denver airport, um, and so he says hello and waved at us. That's so nice, Liam. He almost cares enough to join, you know, and participate. Um, but so he, now he owns the Wi-Fi in the Denver airport. That's right. He's taken that over. He's probably, <laughs> Liam is probably, this is one of these guys, if you've never seen it, Liam does the uh, So You Can Hack SharePoint. Uh, it's a great, it, it's been out there for like eight, nine years. It's very entertaining to go and see. It's also very scary. Um, uh, and and uh, now he's poking fun at me, talking about the voices in my head. Yes, they are all, the voices in my head are all, song lyrics from the 80s um, doesn't mean that they don't have the right answers um, you know what one of the things I always I, 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 it was I've seen Liam do that session live three times twice in DC once I believe it was Chicago um, mm -hmm. and he always prefaces by because he shows a bunch of live environments that he is hacked into he doesn't really hack it's all legal he's not broken any laws it, these are he people, walks up to the door <laughs> he he goes into environments that he shouldn't be in that people have not uh, uh properly locked down but he he stays legit anyway but he uh what what i all three times where he he prefaces his presentation by saying if you see a site that belongs to you please do not say anything come talk to me and I'll tell you like what I did, what why I was able to get right in, whatever. All three times there was somebody in the session <laughs> whose network it was, whose site it was, and and then you'd hear like the person in the back suddenly, <gasps> you know, <laughs> you know wow. the, the so shock. You know, and, in some circles, in some circles, that's called an upsell. Yeah. That's right. Well, and I think it was that that time, and, and I think yeah, Liam says he says he just knocks on the door. Um, I believe the last time I saw it was in DC. Was it SharePoint Fest DC when he did that? And it was enough. And the woman started talking. And so he got up and they and got up with her and walked her out to the back of the, the, the room to talk to her, to calm her down a bit, I think. And then uh, came back. That's in. the start of a drinking problem right there. <laughs> but for those that don't know who may be watching, listening, and don't know Liam. Liam is one of those characters, and I've known him for many years, so I can absolutely say this. I know he's listening, and he can smile when he hears this. To know him is to love him. Between you know the, the physical appearance and the yeah. accent yeah. and the sincerity yeah. which he presents, absolutely. Always, and I, I won't I won't do the inju injustice of, of doing the accent, though I do it very well. Um, you have to hear him go through the way he breaks it down and explains it in order to realize that. Uh, he's a slightly brilliant guy, and, and it's it's done with a lot of uh, effect. I was yeah, going to say, um, let's plug you know, his blog. You know, yeah, there's like uh, there's black hat hackers and there's white hat hackers. I think that uh, Liam's hat 
must be sh- so white shining it would blind you. Like he's the <laughs> sweetest, nicest guy. <laughs> Not only is he like going up and ringing the bell, he's probably polishing the bell. You know when he when he goes. <laughs> <and> <laughs> the bell. Yeah, he's so gonna leave it. Blog. You know, it's the forest kind of thing where it's like leave it better than you found it. He absolutely is leaving every place he finds better than it was. He's probably organizing people's files for them when he arrives. Well, he something. he is out there. Uh, he's had an exchange with uh, with Randall and answering more of the earlier question um, out on the, uh, the the live stream. So, yeah, he does. He says, "I am like an angel hacker." <laughs> yes, I believe it. <laughs> Now the one other thing I would say about is like is you have to hear uh, his boys his his young boys laugh because it it's like a a mini uh, Liam and but it's 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 like uh, what the what are the names of this the the of the uh, chipmunks you know he's got they've got like that higher Alvin version Theodore of his laugh Simon. yes yeah it's Alvin hilarious Theodore and Simon yes yeah you know I, I got one more quick thing to say there's a lot of companies who or there's Companies who care about security, there's this game. You have like the red team versus the blue team. I once worked in a company that that had that, where you'd have like this team fighting this other team, and the bell was often was often the domain admin. You know, they're they're trying to get domain admin, but let me let me tell you, if you have on-premise SharePoint, it's actually in some ways just as powerful to have the account that is the index account in SharePoint. Because if you can get that one, it has access to everything it indexes, which often is all, where all the data is. Yep. So, hey, when, if you guys are playing that game, that's one of the ones uh, – because people don't, don't change it. You know, SharePoint on-prem was one of those environments that – Hey, if you change a password on an on account, you know you can change your user accounts all the time, every six months or whatever. But they, if you don't change that index account, man, uh, what a uh, uh, <laughs> So that's that's definitely one uh, that uh, hackers love to get is that SharePoint index account. Yeah. yeah, I've seen them just go against you know user profile web service and just. It scrapes some very interesting stuff out of uh, uh, just wide open uh, UPSs and UPAs. Just uh, throw it up there on the screen easily. You know, this is publicly available. I just made a request. Yeah. And he walks up to the door. He'll knock, but he does not go in. Yeah. And yeah. for those, by the way, to answer that other question of. Uh, um, or to uh, share the information for Liam's info, you can follow Liam out on Twitter. At Hello, it's Liam, and that's his blog as well. Uh, I'll paste it in here. Yeah, kind of a Mister Rogers kind of experience. <laughs> Hello, it's Liam. Uh, yeah, Liam's loving that description. His neighborhood <laughs> is pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, too funny. Um, hey, here's another question. Uh, Mario is asking, um, help uh, a user's mailbox creation was stuck on preparing state. Uh, what would be the best solution on this one? Stuck on the preparing state. Uh, Ever? Wait it out? I mean... Which... Sean, which is the uh, a couple responses uh, on the thread said exactly that. It said it could take up to twenty four hours. Yeah, I mean it's depends on the tenant and number of people, activity, all sorts of things. I mean, you can go through all the normal things to look at from a checklist perspective. Did you have a license to create it? What type of license is it? All that stuff is to ensure that you have goof along the way. But call us in 25 hours. I always wanted to be a doctor, so call us in 25 hours if it still hurts. Yeah. It, it's one of those things where if it's a machine, you know, if it's on your personal machine, when things like that, you know that when you when you stop something, you're going to have to go clean it up. And it's like going and cleaning up your registry, right? <laughs> if it happens yeah. to stuff. It's like, uh, have you ever done, have you ever noticed when you do external sharing, 
it actually requires some internal stuff and some external stuff. Mm-hmm. And if, if it gets interrupted, sometimes you'll end up with like a half externally shared thing where it looks like it's shared, but they never actually got the invite or it, it never actually created the pair because it needs to create that guest account and it needs to create the Azure AD thing. Phantom <laughs> sharing. Both pieces need to exist for it to work properly. It's interesting you bring that up, Joel, because the next question that I had was from Sherilyn. Um, how do I, as an admin, adjust settings so we can do link sharing outside of the organization? Yeah, and and I think there's five places, I think, for that policy. Mm-hmm. No, basically, you have to start at the top level and enable the tenant before you can then allow external sharing in the various apps, yeah. like SharePoint and Teams and... And Lots so of different touch points. One drive. Before we jump off the email question, I just want to go back a second and say, I I have seen it twice where it it the on screen result is preparing, but it actually creates everything on the back end. So try to log into the actual email account, refresh your screen, see what the admin side looks like. It wasn't clear to me if that person was a, a user or an administrator, but go go through the processes and see if if it's really in step mode or if it's actually been created. Here, yeah. just really quick, I'd like to make a, just a quick plug here. Uh, if you're watching the live stream, if you do go out to Buckley Planet, um, I, every one of these, this is week number 15 or episode 15. And so we are doing this at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. But I compile both of them together into one recording, push it out on YouTube. It should be out there um, tonight or tomorrow. But also you get this quick list with all of the topics that we discuss. But specifically, I want to point out that, yes, the last week, we start to move on this other topic. As an admin, can I control the auth? Nope. Eric wants to talk more about AV controls. So my point here is I just know... (laughs) We move on to another topic. <laughs> Eric has his habit of jumping back to stuff that we've uh, kind of moved on from. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I, I really I resemble that remark, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. You're I didn't busting the timeline, dude. There, there it is again. All right, yeah, I'll get that. <laughs> that five refresh is a good one, though. Like, Sorry, I've seen that. Sorry, we're on the next subject now. We can't go back. <laughs> yeah. <Done. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of that, so uh, after, I guess the timing of this is poor, um, I would like to read um, back on Randall's question how Liam responded. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, so uh, on that... Sorry, see- Christian, we have, to, we have to move on. I'm sorry, the producer's <laughs> in my ear, we have to move on. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Uh, no, uh, so Liam said, uh, as long as, hey, Randall, as long as the UPN matches from on-prem to the Office 365 users can get seamless login. And then um, Randall says, I, I've seen that part and understand that changing the UPN do- does break a few legacy internal applications, but allows users to log into Microsoft 365. I haven't seen anyone that recommends an alternate UPN over a primary one. Our alternate uh, alternative UPN matches our exchange SMTP address fine. I just don't know what I don't know you know. <laughs> yes, we know. Um, and uh, do, 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 I think he responded, Liam. Um, I ha- still think anybody who's talking about UPNs and domains, it's one of those things where you don't want to get a half answer. You right. absolutely need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, who yeah. can actually look at the full problem. Yeah. And, and Liam is saying, have a client right now, Randall, that their UPN doesn't match um, uh, on-premises, et cetera. Normal recommendation is have the same um, org level settings for links. Uh, oh, wait, that's he's answering the other question. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that is the, the you're exactly right. We can... This is this is like the Doctor Oz response to medical questions. Uh, we're talking <laughs> high level, general, but something like this, you really need to kind of go through, troubleshoot through some of the issues. Um, yeah, Doctor, Christian. it hurts when I do this. I don't, Christian, stop do doing. That. Don't do that, Christian. <laughs> since you're since you're the owner of of the uh, the individuals, I think if you connect UPN guy to email guy, you might get a whole solution. And I think that has sort of happened <laughs> over in in the book of faces yes oh, gee. there we go <laughs> that's what we do here eric we bring people together we we form friendships 
in, until <laughs> yeah, they're insulted and run away. Yes. <laughs> for, for watchers and listeners, I, I just want to throw the caveat in, which I normally do in my intro, but since I didn't get to do that today, uh, my wait, my, let's do intros now. Soul, Eric. Come on, intros. <laughs> yeah, let's change up your timeline. Make it as crazy as possible. <laughs> Is to get Sean to emit fluids out of his. <laughs> That's right. I, he, he, coffee comes up, he, dude. If I ever get a talk show, Sean's going to be in the next chair because everything I say to him is amazingly funny. And the goal is for him to spit coffee all over the screen. Thank you. Milk would be better, though. I think it would show up better on the live stream. <laughs> that it would. Yeah. I agree. Hey, let's do t shirts. Oh, yeah, t shirts. We'll see the latest one. <laughs> yeah, networking protocol jokes. <laughs> it's a slow response. Joel, you go next. Uh, I I actually uh, mine's easy. No, just just black, plain black uh, collared shirt. Oh come on, Joel, you're phoning it in. <laughs> I know, I know. I was looking this morning, and I was like. Anyway, closet didn't. Uh, I, I was hurrying. <laughs> yeah, I've I've worn this, but everybody can name the company. Oh yes, Aperture Labs. Yeah, yeah. I've got nothing, but next week I'll wear a uh, Christian's favorite. Actually, Christian, why don't you wear my favorite T-shirt next week? How's that? Which one is that? It's the one that says, I came to hear Eric talk and all I got was his lousy t-shirt. That's right. It's in a duffel bag. It, it's it's slated to go on the next quilt. <laughs> the other one I was thinking about, there's I've had, for some reason, there's been an influx of likes on the Horses End page on Facebook. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know yes. why. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so Horses I, I remember, rocks. so I have that obnoxious, like, like bright day glow lime green horses end t shirt. And I if you remember don't, those. Yeah, if you don't know what horses here, I'll 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 find the page. I'll I'll add the link. But um it's I love the, the com- community antics, you know, the horses end was it, I remember the Boston one where that was gonna be was it the missed concert or well, something to that effect. I think I've got a, a, a picture of the t shirt. Okay, hang on. This that is was a, awesome. Yeah. yeah, so this, I, this totally. side, like, folks, is how you, you know there are no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly there are no more questions here. Um, are there is there a photo of that? Oh, I, I had it. I had it. Something to discuss um, while we're oh. while you're pulling oh. up. Wait, here's I, we I, I, got the t-shirt. The, I guess we that might mess up the timeline. Here, right. here's, wait, the there's, there's the t-shirt in the live stream. So <laughs> I'm sure they're enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the in the live stream, so sorry. So you guys can't share, yes. Okay, so um here's my topic for you. Um we talk about citizen developer and this community around um the the not a not a developer, but we you can't say not a developer and even the no code, low code is like not doesn't do it justice. Um and what I've been noticing is there's a new term and this new term is maker and uh i'm a big fan of the maker movement because maker is actually a movement it's a diy movement it's a tinkerer hacker kind of movement yeah i I, embrace the uh millennial a little bit it's a it's it's, um it's it's, it's coming with a force i think more tuned towards the folks who are building physical things than virtual though right yeah, and that's that's a, that's a good comment because I think that uh, is is it going to stick? Are are we actually going to up the maker movement to go from physical to virtual? No, I think that's the whole point. The maker thing is is it's uh, I mean the first thing that I think of when I think of makers, I I, I think of like the. Uh, um, the steampunk crowd, but I, I think of people like Verosky that you know, just in the picture of the horse's end picture, and him going and building furniture and and fixing stuff in and uh, overly ornate and creative ways around his his house and sharing that stuff out. I mean, using a three D printer to build your own missing part on a now 
defunct, you know, a, a, like a car part that's just not made anymore. You know, that that's how what I equate maker to. What's wrong with yes. citizen, citizen Simone Yertz. What's wrong with the citizen developer, you know, description? Oh, no. no, it's got to go. <clears throat> it's got to go. I think citizen developer like it still downplays the you're not a real developer. And that's not that's it's it's its own thing. What about power and user? And when you when you think about power apps and power automate you're really taking things and combining them and building things and and you think about the it's really taking legacy things and connecting them or you know you're building something new from from previous old things and it's also got that aspect of and you're doing it in a cheap way i think those (laughs) yeah it absolutely they use legos a lot with all that power platform stuff I think it's. I think it is going to stick. I think. I think the the battle is. Um, it may be still raging, especially based on your reactions. But um, I didn't realize there was a battle. Yeah, yeah. If you go out, you're, you're going to start seeing Maker all over the power apps and Pot of Power Automate stuff. Hmm. You, you okay. Re- replaced. I'll look for that. Scene, I've I've been noticing. In fact, if you go to the. Um, the kit, the power platform uh, kit, the new one, the uh, what do they call it? It's not a governance kit. <laughs> What's it called? The um... no, nobody on here knows. First aid kit. Starter kit. Starter <laughs> kit. Power platform starter kit. It actually refers to the maker on on the on the the intro page. Yeah, makers will forever be. Um symbolized by like Simone Yertz, the uh, chick who built a a truckla. She took a Tesla and made a truck. (laughs) She's uh, the precursor to the cyber truck. She's the queen of the shitty robots. That was her original title, but she does lots of other things now. The the I guess the problem I have with it, Joel, is that makers are specifically <coughs> offline, non tech. It, it's in fact so much of it is a big part of the movement is um, using uh, hand tools to build a lot of those things. And guess what the power platform is? They're all power tools. Yeah, yeah. I I think that uh, it, it it'll be interesting to see if it really takes hold I, I have seen a lot of the uh, these 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 new kind of um, these, these new power platform the power addicts they're they're embracing maker I'm telling you yeah I I again they they, they can they're, do that and I get it I understand I just think that people from the maker movement probably would not agree with that but, but yeah it's it's Make a your movement is almost like a hashtag, you know. It's probably going to be something that can change. Nobody can own it. Um, yeah. it sounds like there may be a robot lady who uh, has embraced it, but I think we've got a lot of people in the community. I think they're going to embrace it as well. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to somebody. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> We'll Guaranteed. talk about this in a year, and then we'll see how it's how it's yeah. progressed. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other? Any other? Uh, yeah, we usually start out that way, but you know, any other questions? Anything come up over the past week? You know, you're talking about tasks earlier. Task. Yeah. I hear there's some task management stuff that's releasing this week. Oh, really? New Minecraft drop. All right. My eight-year-old, kind of eight-year-old so nephew will be excited about that, Sean. So. It's it's a very big release. Excellent. It's the level of detail that I love in the description. They totally <laughs> overhauled the nether. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sean, Do I'm any of you to, guys play Minecraft? I'm going to have to ask you to speak English. You know how it offends me when you go off script like that. Yeah. No. 
<laughs> Sean, Sean, you know my my gaming habits are restricted to to two games. So yeah, yeah I know TF2 and uh, your uh, Lord of the Rings Lord stuff. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I finished a game yesterday, Vader Immortal Two. Oh yeah, yeah, that was great. A VR VR game where you're basically, oh. you know, yeah, I've been using the you force in... on robots and uh, you get to I... use your lights. Saber. I've Come been on. seeing you in uh, in VR land as being online often. I, I enjoy it. I think in the COVID times, I think VR has really taken off. Um, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, well, we just need more equipment and then it'll take off. Well, the Oculus stuff has been in very short um, availability. Like, right. it, you, it's hard to get supplies. It's hard to get anything even like the new stuff, it's very difficult to get. Yeah. Unless they <laughs> knock over my house. <laughs> well, you know, Joel, I don't. It, it, I wrote about it a, a few months back. Um, so last fall, Noah and I went to a, a VR demo. There were two companies that were demonstrating, and uh, we so we were up at the kiln facility up in uh, uh, Salt Lake City, and. Uh, really not a lot not very well attended maybe 20 people at this event and uh one of them was a vendor that was building it for pri primarily for education resources and went down and was was trying it out i was like look i've seen something i've seen variations of this i said the problem is that entry point he's like no it's it's available on steam right now it's five dollars like w wait so i can go in and pay $5 through my current Steam account, get this module, go and add my my content, my slides into it, and record my you know, image standing there talking about it, and I could build a classroom, I could build this for my students today. It's like, yeah, for five bucks. Like, wow. that, that's it, available now. Of course, I don't remember the name, I have to go look it up, the, the name <laughs> of the company, um, to be able to, I wasn't prepared to talk about it here. But the, the point was, uh, to your point, uh, Joel, is that uh, you know you don't have to have the advanced uh, the headset to do that. Now, obviously, it's a more impressive experience, Eric, uh, when you have the headset and have the full VR experience. But you can have a two day two D experience um, as well. And and the other side too is that. Um, their platform that what you're paying for the basic version to go in and to add your content is that 2d experience if you want to have like in their demo that was a professor that recorded uh, a class talking about uh, the dissection of a human heart and had this 3d model and walking away and you see it kind of expand and that is more than the five dollar version to go and build all that and you have to go build the 3d model of course um, but if you have that already built, um, you can add that into your presentation. Um, but it just, it, it really opened up to my, my eyes to, uh, where the marketplace really was, um, the readiness. Now, obviously this was before the COVID stuff, um, which made me, gave me a different perspective on like SharePoint spaces and some of the other stuff Microsoft is working on. You know, I, I, I have a couple of recent experiences as well. Like I was buying a, um, a scale that um, that has some really cool features where it'll tell you your BMI and tell you like how much you've lost. It's a cool little app. Um, but when I'm buying the, 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 the scale on Amazon, there was a button. So the, it did a mixed reality so you can actually see the scale on, on the floor. <laughs> um, and I think it, it's not even just, you know, something that the, that the, the maker added onto it, but the, um, uh, they, um, did there. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, um, I think it's, it's something that Amazon enabled. So it was basically mm. you, they could upload their three to three dimensional thing into it. And then it shows up in the phone. And then they start um, the other thing, selling you product descriptions for, for, uh, chubby men, you know, it just starts, you know, it's it, what I, what you need to do is, is, is get advertisements that remind you that you ate too much over the weekend for that 4th of July party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, yeah. I did some spaces last night, actually. So I built oh. a, a, a virtual lobby for, 
for an event I haven't yet um, announced, um, or a party that I haven't yet announced. Anyway, it was really fun kind of putting together, just using the the 3D objects that are already in there. There's already a microphone, there's already, um, you know, costumes and things like that. So I was able to kind of build out the 3D yeah. uh, lobby. Um, here's the different things, and then basically you can just make it to where you're clicking through and into the team's meeting. So basically, I'm able to kind of build out my event before it even begins. Hmm. It's pretty cool. I have it at the 3D lobby. I think a few people have talked about using spaces for, for kind of the 3D lobby. And I did all that without a headset. You know, the whole thing, I was able to build it all out. And, uh, and you can consume it the same way. You don't have to have the 3D, like you were saying. But if you want that experience, you know, you can get the whole 3D experience with the, with the headset. Shoot me a link, Joel. I'd like to check that out. Have there been any? Yeah, I don't think there's a guest experience. That's the problem, right? I could, I could absolutely upload the the end result, um, exp- or I could do a video. Yeah, I could share a video. Why not? Have there been any uh, uh, like I'd like to experience events? It VR. Yeah, that have had yeah. the VR experience right. yet, it, 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 like the Expo Hall. Have. So has anybody done that for the community events that you guys are aware of? Joel, are you aware of any? No, but I'm going to – maybe I'll be the first. <laughs> yeah, because this has been a, a discussion we've had about uh, with like Inspire and Ignite happening, how they're going to create a that experience for us to engage with partners, with Expo Hall uh, sponsors, with you know e- each other, those casual encounters – um, that, um, that we have that make, you know, going to a physical event, um, so valuable. So we did, I do have some quick stats on when we did the uh, virtual marathon, we did do alt spaces mm-hmm. and we had a hundred people, 104 people who had joined alt space through that event and they entered, there were 400, um, consumptions, you could say like visits, mm-hmm. 400 visits for those hundred, 104 people. So they they came back multiple times. Hmm. Pretty good. Metric. So it's kind of some interesting statistics. That's cool. Yeah, I'm in the spaces preview, Joel. So I mean, if that's if you're worried about that stuff, yeah. Well, guess what? Everybody can can now. Um, apparently, Have spaces is in public preview. Yeah, wow. yeah. So last night in my tenant, which is not one that was opted in, it was there. And the features, you have to activate the feature, which I haven't done in forever. But <laughs> you activate the feature, and it pops up. So when you click New, you can create new space. Cool. Yeah. So add that link in there. I'll have to share my experience. <laughs> yeah. You need to check out. Yeah. Around yeah. in Joel and... You know, it was in my MVP tenant, so I probably could give you an account because I, I don't know how to, I don't even give guest experiences in spaces. You know what I mean? Sean? Mm. Can I share it, space? It's just, I mean, it's just access to the, the site. Oh, I guess you, maybe there is guest access. But you just can't do anonymous. Maybe that's what I was thinking is anonymous. Yeah, not anonymous. But, I mean, I can give you a... I'll give you my ID. Yeah, please do. You said that I still see like the... the I still see the private preview up there. I shared the link there. It, but... says, it says preview on it, but it's it's available, I think, to a lot of tenants. Okay. As I understand it. Dropped it in the chat, Joel. Great. Well, I see that, um, yeah, just that we got a, a hello from uh, Neil that he wasn't going to make it a few minutes ago, but uh, I'm just now seeing it. We're at the end anyway, but, uh, you know, this will, might, so we are at the, later. We are at the uh, top of the hour, so uh, thank you, gentlemen, for participating this time. And, and for those that are interested, including on the panel, that mm-hmm. would like to uh, participate, we'll be back at 6 p.m. Pacific for our uh, APAC session and we'll do this all again. And 
Um, Eric, feel free to join us and to um, discuss again any of the things that we've already answered in today's session. <laughs> I was actually thinking I was going to block out an hour later on today to go back to last week and <laughs> repeatedly answer those points and right. questions. That's right. Uh, yeah. We love you, Riz. Let's get a bunch of type A personalities in one little space and see who can suck up the most air. <laughs> Uh, I can just mute all you guys. <laughs> Oxygen not included. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that it's much better that way, Eric. Yeah. Well, you thanks keep everybody. Me that. Yeah. I don't believe. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, all thanks right. everybody for watching, Gentlemen. and we'll uh, we'll be have, we'll be back in a few hours. Awesome. Right. Great week, everybody. Catch you later, Catch you guys. Later. Bye. Yep. See ya. All right. All right, and we are underway. Uh, all right, and uh, hello everybody. So this is uh, part two of the uh, today's of episode fifteen of the Microsoft Community Office Hours. Uh, my name is Christian Buckley. I'm an Office Apps and Services MVP and Microsoft Regional Director, and I'm here with Sean and Hal. I'm Sean McDonough, Office Apps and Servers MVP. Hal, over to you. I am Hal Hostetter, also an Office Apps and Services MVP. Excellent. And we all come to you with uh, different backgrounds, and Sean and I some similar stuff, but he's more techie than I am. And, uh, I'm a gearhead. The, hence the, the, the headphones. Uh, that's right, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you have questions about Microsoft products or services, Feel free to ask. We've got this live streaming in a couple places out on Facebook. Um, and uh, we do our best to answer questions. And we'll kind of go dig through comments in the uh, Collab 365 pages, the Office 365, as well as the... And, and I'm calling it that because that's what it's still labeled, gentlemen, <laughs> from this morning. So it's Microsoft 365 now. but uh, And also the Microsoft Teams uh, community page which has like, I don't know, 20,000, 40,000 people on or something like that. So feel free to ask your questions if you're watching. Don't be shy. And we'll do our best to uh, to get to them and answer questions. And uh, anything happened today? Any, any come across any questions? I had a nice follow-up conversation with Liam. Oh. Was he still sitting in, in Denver at the airport? <laughs> um, I think he had moved on perhaps but okay. um he uh he was greatly entertained by us well we were pouring it on pretty thick for him in his praise so i'll edit all of that out in the final video of course <laughs> <laughs> i told him that he says you guys were like talking talking me up for like 10 minutes i'm like oh yeah we'll whittle that down to like 30 seconds yeah. And then I'll bleep out a bunch of stuff to make it sound like we're swearing at him rather than praising him. So, you know, just yeah, he's fun. gonna. I can't believe he's gonna be a grandpa. Oh, I know. When he's like thirty, right? <laughs> he looks like it. Yeah. With his P ninety X or whatever it is routines and mm -hmm. muscle crunching insanity. Some people are into that stuff. I I don't know. Uh, they're they're crazy, but I'm into donut crushing. <laughs> Crush it. Excellent. <laughs> Hal, how about donuts. A, anything you've come across over the course of the day? Anything knowing that we're going? I'm going to ask this question yet again. Um. Well, there's some things I can't talk about, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can have that. No, there was there was there was another meeting earlier today with uh, Dynamics and Power Apps, and they've got some things which yeah. are coming that I can't talk about. Yeah, I didn't see. I I might have uh, declined on that. I you know there there's been a uh, it seems to me there's been an, an influx of the uh, MVP NDA calls. Uh, and a bunch of uh, more granular topics, which is great. Yeah, there's been an uptick for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I yeah, sat through one. Tough to... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. 
<laughs> and of course, it just deadly silent. So that's yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, Sean, that uh, I sat through one with plan and for planner today. Mm. So it's it's great. It was a little bit different. It wasn't so much hearing about new stuff as providing direct feedback, and and it's great to. Uh, one of the questions was, "Do you like this format?" It's like anytime you're coming and asking, and they're clearly taking down notes and how we feel about certain things. And I love to be able to provide Heck that yeah. kind of input input. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. Without a doubt. It's another advantage of being an MVP. So if anybody has a desire to, uh, to move in that direction, um, you know, that's a, it's a great perk to have that direct line in and be able to provide that kind of feedback back to Microsoft. July 1st is just around the corner guys. Yeah. Yep. It is, isn't it? Yes. yes, it is. It's Wednesday. It's raining today. Of course it's July. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we're going to be extreme weather. Here. Yeah. I know. I know. This has been the most, uh, the least summer-like weather um, in the four years that we've been here. Um, there's been maybe two days this year where I think, hey, I could go swimming. Yeah, I actually yeah. contemplated as soon as I walked out the door with the dogs this afternoon, like, should I go back and get my sweater? Wow, yeah. really? Yeah, it dropped 23 degrees since yesterday. Holy smokes. Wow. Yeah, so good times. Dude, well, yeah, here. really. Uh, we've had, um, it, it was rainy here today, but um, it was... Uh, we had a lot of nature outside. I don't know if you saw it's my usually Facebook. usually where the nature oh. is, but so I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. I don't know if you saw my Facebook <laughs> post, but um, we had, you know, just oh, yeah. this morning. Yeah. Um, I looked out the window and I saw this very cool spider web set up in the grass. Yeah. Um, and it had caught a bunch of dew in it. Those and cute little looked, brown recluses. They're so dar dar darling. <laughs> I hope not, but uh, um, no. but um, that looked cool. And then, of course, we had deer just yeah. hanging out in the front. My wife has been catching the deer, catching, uh, eating her plants um, in the early yeah, morning hours cool. on the security cam. So I was going to suggest, you know, next time you get a haircut, you sprinkle the hair around the plants. That's one way they don't like the, the scent. But <laughs> you got nothing, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's dust. <laughs> Best. Uh, <laughs> Blow it away. Yeah, hey, uh, so that's where I, I was going to ask you. Uh, we lived in um, uh, Alpine for a year, like 25 years ago, uh, here in Utah. There was a herd that kind of roamed, <laughs> like we were in a neighborhood right by the hills. And so they would come down, and there was like 30, 40 of them just would come through and... Uh, we didn't have a garden at the time, so I just thought it was beautiful. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neighbors didn't like it so much. Um, mm -hmm. It's just really incredible to watch. And, of course, we made it worse by we would buy um, you know, bags of apples, just the cheap red apples, and throw <laughs> oh, them out geez. there. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Boy. Yeah. yeah. Pull them in. Exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um just think, uh, yeah, <laughs> like that. JV comments on the on the uh, on the watch party that nature is always outside. Exactly, my sentiments exactly. <laughs> so spot on, yeah. JV. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Who knew? Yeah, uh, I don't know. They you think that they would teach you that kind of stuff in school? Not a word of it, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Take it for given. Uh, yeah. So actually, it, that was the whole nature chat was uh, that was fourth grade here in uh, well in California. It was mm. fourth grade where they did the naturals. In fact, I so I'm related to John Muir. If you know the name, he helped kind of discover and map out most of the Western U.S. So there's Is that Muir Woods. Uh huh. 
Oh, okay. So he's a fourth great uncle. Um, and, uh, and so I, I, in fourth grade, when we were starting to learn about natural history and the local Indians, like, so I grew up in the San Francisco Bay area and, uh, the, the, uh, indigenous, uh, American Indians that lived throughout that, that area. Um, I can't remember the names of the stuff now, but anyway, uh, we lived like right at the base of Mount Diablo and I loved hiking up there and you'd see where they would grind the air, the acorns and these rocks and, you know, where their village areas were. And it was all still kind of mapped out. So I, I used to know all the edible plants in, in that part of California. And I, and I thought, you know, I'm going to go work in, uh, it, you know, out in these parks. That's what I want to do for a living. That's what I want to do when I grow up. And I think it was sixth grade, and I still kind of thought that I wanted to be this naturalist. And then I found out by talking to one that how much money they make, and or didn't make, and struggled with with things. And uh, yeah, I, I rethought my strategy. <laughs> I like to vacation in the nature now, so, mm-hmm. and and that works. And you have the means to do that. Uh, I have yes, I have nature. Yes, all all every time I go outside, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk some technology. Um, let's see. I'm looking through to see if there's any questions. So there's nothing that's been newly posted since. This morning, I'm looking to see if there's anything I've missed here. So going through. So feel, again, feel free if you're watching the live streams. We've got it on in a couple locations. Post a question. Um, let me see. Yeah, there's a there's a few questions. It's difficult when you see, um, and we've we've talked about this in the past, where people post questions. What what they clearly need is to do a phone call with support. We kind of alluded to that in this morning's call. Like sometimes it's not enough just to ask a question. We have follow questions. We need to see the issue to be able to really answer that. And that's a lot of these. Like I'm getting this error message, and what does this mean? And um, not a lot we can do to answer those kinds of questions, unless you're on and live and responding when we have our follow-up questions. That's happened a couple times. Um, have you guys noticed an influx in uh, in spam and phishing emails? Is that just me that's noticed that? Have you guys noticed any changes? Um. I've noticed a slight uptick, but um, not. I get so much junk, it's hard to tell, honestly. <clears throat> <What's>, <laughs> of course, I, for me, part of that spam is, is self-inflicted because, this, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, the, the distribution lists that we all have access to are, are in ridiculous fire hoses. And uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> Mail rules, please. Thank you so much. Yeah, I sometimes wonder with these the the, the list, even the MVP list. You know whether there's others that are taking advantage of that. I mean, I see Microsoft vendors, partners that are on that. Whether I know people that work there or not, but I'm on lists that I know I never signed up to get email from them, and I'm getting spammed by them. So it's a mm-hmm. quick trip to the permanent block. It's unfortunate you have to resort to that, <laughs> but yep. tools that trade, I guess. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, there's a there's actually another question to something we talked about briefly this morning. Um, Mirko is asking, uh, he's struggling with the experience. Uh, where's Riz when we need to, when we talk about experiences? Uh, <laughs> struggle with the experience when changing the assigned license. There's a long delay between assignment and activation. Perhaps there are some usage problems between. Um, yeah, uh, the, uh, we, 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 we talked this morning, somebody was saying, well, like activating a new license and, 
and it just it's showing it kind of the spinning wheel. It's like what's happening, and, and our response was, well, depending on uh, you know the, the 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 license, depending on the the servers that your where your tenant is located, but um, and those services running, which they can be up to twenty four hours for a newly activated user to get all the licenses up and running. Yeah, resources. It it all comes down to what you know when you activate that license, uh, it kicks off a a bunch of little uh, processes, bunch of processes that will go out and. Uh, provision and enable uh, various settings. Some of them are very easy to flip, I guess, quick to set. Others, you may be put in a queue uh, and you typically queues are shared between tenants. Mm -hmm. So you and all of your friends who are in your tenant sharing the same hardware end up in that queue for certain processes and some of those processes yeah it can take quite some time for them to complete so certain parts will complete quickly others will go slowly just it really just depends just looking to see if it's a new question that came in uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, actually, I just I jumped over that. So there's those two questions. One that we just talked about. Uh, one that we talked about this morning, and I jump over to the Teams community, and um, VK is asking a similar question. We have assigned audio conferencing licenses to users. It's been more than five hours, but we still didn't see any bridge call information when scheduling a Teams call. So mm. getting those licenses to work. And I don't know anything specifically about, I don't know if either of you guys, about the audio, any nuances there, but again, no. it's... You yeah. see stuff I don't, I don't understand, the uh, provisioning parts. I know what they got to do, but I don't know what that involves. Yeah. Now, there's a couple people saying the same thing. Hey, you know, it can take up to 24 hours. Um, especially due to the increased usage of the platform. Um, so it's just the reality. You know, no matter how much, how quickly, it's kind of like, you know, uh, all these conferences that we do around the world, and no matter how much they plan for the demands on the Wi-Fi, the day one is just always a <laughs> miserable experience. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, and it's it's kind of the same thing. I think that in some ways that this whole quarantine period and this massive uh, push of everybody working from home has done something similar. It's like it, it, as quickly as they can adjust, people are going in and using more and more of these resources. And yeah, I think logically people are all also you know they're very quickly getting up to speed with a lot of the features and utilizing them more and more more recorded um, sessions, more uploading and storing a video, uh, and editing more co-editing activities that are going on. All right. of these things which are going to impact your performance, that are going to impact your network. Absolutely, yeah. You wonder how much. Um how much headroom uh, various providers gave themselves for growth of services and, you know, how much of that is being consumed right now? You know, how much capacity do they have that they can still light up versus what's utilized and they've got to perhaps go back and put more um, capacity in for op, you know optical cables and networking and all that sort of stuff thinking the last mile run you know what's just incredible to think about um, is the I don't know how many um, you know if you if you were able to kind of light up and and see how many 
servers are being utilized for your tenant and for your current user, the user demand. And obviously data is being uh, you know, striped across multiple servers in multiple locations depending on you know, the company, the tenant, all those kinds of things. But the, uh, I just think it's fascinating when we did capacity planning back in the early days, back in MMS, and for those that don't know, uh, so I, I joined Microsoft in 2006. I was there for three and a half years. I started with a group called Microsoft Managed Services, which got renamed uh, months later to Business Productivity Online Services, or BPOS, which was the precursor to what is Office 365. So we were building this you know, this hosted SharePoint, um, you know, the, this this cloud version. And in some of the initial, um, you know, uh, just architectural, like, logical diagrams, and uh, but it's it, it just uh, it's fascinating to look as we were adding in all of these components. But when we were going out and building out, um, and I, I actually helped write one of the first uh, um, licensing models for, uh, Office 365. It looks nothing like that, and you know, I made the mistake of trying to build the licensing towards uh, being break even to slightly profitable, and uh, was uh, kind of yelled at for that. Crazy thoughts, I know, I know. Um, but the the initial version. But how many uh, how many servers? Again, we were on prem. It was a dedicated well. It was a dedicated cloud offering, so it's essentially you'd sign on to it, and rather it just be the cloud and this amorphous thing that's out there out of the multiple data centers. It was, you know, a, a, a couple data centers, and Microsoft became your outsource IT, and so you'd log in. It was to Microsoft data center to these these servers, these dedicated uh, cloud environments, and. We were building our most of what we were doing around this enterprise model of 5,000 users. And I don't remember the numbers, like how many we estimated of the 5,000 users in an organization, how many were concurrent, how that scaled up to 50 or 100,000. All I know is that for the 5,000, it was a crazy number of servers, dedicated servers to that single tenant, that single um, company, it was like the initial footprint was like 22 servers, 25, nice. and that, yeah, because we were thinking of concurrent users and all of the, the capabilities. And so, having the headroom. Right. So I'd, I'd love to see what that looked like, you know, what that looks like now. They've gotten the, it's so much more efficient, of course, but. Yeah, drop a container in and, you know, hook up the network and power and you're pretty much good to go there's good and bad with that i know sean you spent a lot of your life thinking about you know that capacity planning and a lot of the issues around that uh and obviously the the the, the pro to being on-prem or a dedicated cloud customer is that it, you can be much more targeted about the services that you need and the performance that you need around them and go and beef those things up right um, and you don't have as much control over that in a cloud offering. No, you really have to um, make sure that uh, you partner with someone who uh, kind of works the way you do or offers services that you're um, willing to accept. A lot of people enter into, I, I think a lot of people enter into many agreements, cloud agreements, um, not really thinking about what the um, actual business continuity implications are for their situations. Um, and, you know, if they have an outage um, or something you know, like COVID, COVID is a great example. Yep. Um, you know, workforce, you know, at what point most organizations that write business continuity plans develop them um, in a way that uh, they've got criteria that will have to be met to um, kick the plan into gear. And <coughs> what that criteria is. Um, <laughs> Maybe you should even define for some folks that uh, the differences between having like 
backup of a system versus a business continuity strategy. Some people think that they're like the same thing, like, okay, oh, back up to be able to restore this data. It's like business continuity is, is a much bigger thing than just the backup. That's one component of it. Yeah, business continuity is, uh, that's the point. <clears throat> business continuity is, if you think of an onion, disaster recovery and backup, you know, like is right at the center. You might be focused on that one technical element. But when you get into business continuity, you're talking about um, processes, uh, human procedures, calling people, um, pulling out guidebooks, um, phone chains, things like that. Um, these all, ex there are other exercises that should be conducted as part of uh, a good business continuity strategy uh, at risk analysis, business impact analysis. Yep. Um, one of, you know, this is one of the sessions I give um, when we go out on the road and uh, I talk disaster recovery. I focus more on the that business end of it rather than the technical side because the technical side, ideally, if you do it right, the business drives the technical solution. But oftentimes, many managers are choosing technical solutions to the business problem they don't necessarily understand. Um, and it's it's really rolling the dice. Well, one of the first um, SharePoint deployments that I did, so prior to joining uh, Microsoft, and uh, I actually wrote the business continuity plan because we had service level agreements with our customers. So, yeah. uh, you know, and SharePoint was one small part of uh, all the other components that we had our, um, you know, our, our on-site backups, the hot backups that were happening and we had the you know, the daily pieces, the weekly, the monthly, and then we had, you know, just not much that was in the cl cloud at that period. That was back in two thousand five, um, but there was the components that were out there, so we knew exactly. We had that disaster plan. It was, you know, like in the binder. You know, what do you do now? Um, but to, got to, specific RPOs and RTOs that you're working against, recovery plan objectives, recovery time objectives. Well, and, and the customer signed off on that. They they understood that, hey, look, this is the at, you know, uh, you know, best case, we're going to lose six hours of data, period. And that's not, what, you know, that was deemed acceptable. Right. And they send off to that. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's just it's a different way of thinking about things, and I think that in the on-prem world, uh, I, I think I, mean, I still because I would discuss so I, I'd present on those topics as well as well at SharePoint Saturdays and other events back in the on-prem days, and most organizations were not planning to that level of detail. Um, yeah. Coming from the data warehouse background, I mean that was just part of of life, and I was shocked to find that people weren't thinking about that, talking about that in the SharePoint space. Yeah, I um, actually, I think it was up in Toronto. Um, I've had all sorts of people come into my sessions, uh, the DR sessions in particular. Um, had one guy from like the Canadian Stock Exchange um, talking about what they had in place and what they were trying to implement and meet and whether they could do it or not, et cetera. So it was all, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a particular plan an approach rather, um, that you follow and you do it a certain way and you get things, um, put in place, but it's not something you want to try and do at the last minute or, uh, quarterback after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. I think the original SharePoint um, backup recovery business continuity documentation. Um, I, I know that Mike Watson started writing that stuff, but I think it was like Sean Lively, maybe even Bill Bear that I'm pretty sure that Bill, I know Sean participated in that as well. And 
I added some pieces in there. That was I'm trying to remember if I presented in one of the internal conferences um, with uh, Sean Lively one time, but Bill another time. But it was all on these. Oh, Watson and I presented on this. Uh, that was at the Tech Ready. So I, I wonder if I have still got copies of some of that stuff. It's always fun yeah. to take a look at. Oh, you're gonna hawk a book. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's I, a lot of that stuff went into this. Yeah. Uh, John Ferringer and I, yeah. the SharePoint 2007 before it and 2010 disaster recovery guides that we wrote for SharePoint. Um, a lot of that came out of my experience with um, financial and insurance companies here in Cincinnati. Um, it was quite some time ago now, but... Uh, that's where I got my, that actually, I was doing DR before I was doing SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And SharePoint, when it came in, you know, I started doing SharePoint and it rolled into it and we talked SharePoint and DR and actually that was a matchup and that was the whole idea of a thing and you know that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know like what the, any, the nuances of any of this stuff with Hal with uh, Outlook and Exchange and that side of it, you know, I just... Uh, in, in my mind, the exchange is always a much more mature um, product and platform and seem to have products and automa automation. SharePoint is just such, could be such this, uh, you know, a st structured and unstructured hot mess. Uh, yeah. By comparison. Mm -hmm. um, Pe people trying to, I mean, I, one organization I worked with, <laughs> I quickly put the kibosh. Um, they were going to, try and stretch their farm across data centers um and they did not have the they did not meet the criteria for the sub millisecond latency um you know gigabit bandwidth with sort of situation and for a stretched uh, farm scenario and they were they were thinking they were going to just run SharePoint, it's like, it does not run that way. You can't, it's, it's a unit. You got to think of it as an entity in and of itself. Yeah. What's well, the, also the problem with people that said, Oh, just replicate what I have here on prem over into Azure, you know, just go. It's like, yeah, it's not exactly built for designed for and works the same way. Can you do it? Yeah. And yeah. uh, it's an expensive way to not perform, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, I mean, what they can do with um, replication and snapshots, point in time, uh, VSS based snapshots, um, and synchronizing those across machines, particularly virtual machines. Yep. You get the entire farm involved in it. That's actually a viable. Um, yeah, but the flavor of SharePoint that they have uh, 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 built out on in most Azure environments uh, is very different uh, deployment configuration. Uh, you know, it's optimized for that environment. Um, it's true. Yeah, I was specifically making the the uh, you know the replicate what they built for the on prem and whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm sure solid practices that went in place with the architecting of that solution um, over into the cloud and then puzzled, you know, why, why is this not working the same way and performing the same way? But yeah, yeah. people <laughs> try yeah. Well, I've got engineer. I, I do have, there's another question. It was actually, I wanted to discuss it this morning. We ran out of time. I had one other question on here, but um uh, this is kind of a broader question. It says, uh, Carly was asking, um, uh, says, hey, new to the group, not at all techie. I have recently bought an Acer Chromebook and have issues using Microsoft Teams. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, for example, no feature to change background and will not allow me to present live events, will only allow me to view as an attendee. Um, and I hadn't gone out and looked at uh, limitations in, you know, specifically in the to know if there's anything with a Chromebook that are you know any other limitations 
there is uh, so anyway I just w- throw that out there we could talk about but uh, any known issues with running teams and other pure cloud Microsoft 365 mm-hmm. on a Chromebook I don't know about Chromebooks uh, the most I can speak of that, that deals with that that realm is uh, is an Android phone and um, I don't <laughs> Uh, with me, Teams is a matter of what time of day I fire it up, what tenant I'm in, what login I'm using, uh, and and a number of other variables. I suppose things like uh, like what the temperature is and the humidity of the UX. That too, because the 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 feature set varies. It seems almost from meeting to meeting, um, and I don't know whether that's a be factor of the way the meeting was set up and is being uh, being run by the host or whether that's me as being uh, the way my tenant is set up or my uh, the, the, ten- the the email address that I'm the, the 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 account that I'm using with whatever tenant I happen to be in there's just so many things that do work don't work work differently depending on all of those variables uh, uh, the closed caption, for example, is one thing. I kind of discovered that by accident. I found that actually working on my phone. Hmm. Um, and then it depends on what meeting I'm in on the computer as to whether or not I see it. Right. Uh, I, that's not a Chromebook, but at least that's sort of relevant from the standpoint that it's, and, that it's an Android, I think. Well, I would say that so two people that have been responding to this one are people that we know, Paul Hunt and uh, Tobias uh, Kaprowski, both out of the UK, um, and uh, and a couple others, Gareth and Pam, had great comments as well on this one. Uh, I think there are three issues for people that are thinking, hey, can I use all this stuff with the Chromebook? And the, the, the most important one is what Paul says, the Chromebook probably doesn't have the power to do backgrounds um, and you need a CPU that supports a particular chipset command. And Tobias says the same thing. It's just not, the Chromebook is not powerful enough based on the chipset requirements and is not currently supported by Microsoft um, with the product. So, so that's the one thing. If you are thinking about, you know, finding a beefier, uh, uh, you know, laptop, but that is a Chromebook type or, uh, you know, trying to keep things lightweight and not have anything installed locally, um, Somebody else made the comment, um, well, the browser version of Teams has fewer features than the application, and there's close to parity. Yeah, there are differences. Um, I don't have a list of them. I'm not really tracking all, all of those things because the core things that I cared about three years ago when it all went live, uh, it's all there now. Um, and you've got the, the meeting, the live meeting, all that capability through the browser base yeah. as well. Um, those were some big differences early on, and that parity is there. So they're fairly close, and the the browser version will surpass the desktop version um, very quickly. It's already in some you know some areas. Um, that's the so that's the second thing. So one is the is the capability of the device. Two is the uh, you know the feature parity, and the third thing is exactly what you said. Uh, Sean and somebody else, uh, Gareth makes the comment that, uh, or sorry, Hal, that you brought up of the, you know, which tenant are you logged into? Because that sounds like part of the problem too is that um, you're not going to see some of those capabilities if you're logged in to a profile in the wrong tenant. If you're looking for, if you're in your own tenant, your company's tenant, the one you own, you're going to have the abilities that you won't have as a guest in other tenants as well. So those three things can impact your usage. But the number one is if the chipset doesn't support it, if the, you know, don't buy a Chromebook. Chromebooks are not known for um, their exemplary horsepower. Yes. Uh, Yeah. Um, Yeah, there's uh, somebody else is asking about on on Teams some of the differences based on the profile. It's it in the SharePoint world that things were simpler. Somebody would say, 
I can't do something. The first place you go and look is around their permissions. Everything is, seems to be permissions based. And teams, a lot of these issues, um, you know, something similar. Somebody is asked uh, in a live event, the guests could only write. They, they, um, you know, they're, they're not able to do much. I'm looking at the their English trying to translate here, but uh, and Tracy Vanderskiff uh, responded and said, yes, uh, in Teams live events, attendees can only type in Q and A, no audio, no video, um, and they can they can use the web to join, but they are just limited in capability. That's one of the biggest, I was going to use the word complaints, but I'll say points of feedback from Microsoft. Um, and they're well aware of this. Is I think uh, people, I, like, I love the idea of the live events. And, uh, you know, but uh, like I found myself using meetings rather than live events because of the limited capabilities of the live events. I'm still a paid uh, Zoom webinar user, so all the webinars that I host, um, because I need the other, the more robust functionality that's missing, the reporting. Uh, the reporting. Yeah. There is no reporting in live events. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't meet the minimum standards for webinar technology. Um, for the Not reporting. market friendly. No. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, and we've said this in prior uh, uh, shows that Microsoft Teams is an enterprise solution. It is robust when you're in your talking about your enterprise within the scope of your enterprise and the, the guests that come in, which are fewer than those that are within your organization, typically. Uh, when you're talking about doing things out uh, uh, for a webinar and doing things out into the public, where you have anonymous access, it's not what it was designed for. So it has limited yeah. features and it is uh i want to say buggy to use in those it's it's working as it was designed for the enterprise which is yeah. different than webinars true enough yeah i always feel like i'm i'm bagging on microsoft for that. it's like i'm not it's like it's not what they designed it for i think it's just you know i would love to be able to uh to simplify, consolidate all of my activities down to Teams and use Teams for everything. Um, but it just doesn't do the core features and it's a pain in the butt and, it, it, and the, the uh, video and audio quality is just not the same as some of these other solutions that have been out there for a long time. It's just... It's right just tool for the right job. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Yeah. All right. I to drive a nail with a pipe wrench. <laughs> What's that, Hal? I said it's hard to drive a nail with a pipe wrench. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> can do that. it. It won't go in straight, yes, but it'll get in there. Do it. <laughs> but I think the simile is quite is quite accurate there in that that respect. I mean, you pipe wrenches work real good on pipes. Hammers work good on nails. It's you can use both after a fashion to work on the other project, but the results are not necessarily going to be all that great. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Just looking to see if any other questions have come in. No, it's kind of a it's positive feeling to go through in the community all the questions and run into the questions which we covered the previous week. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice. What are your thoughts on uh, SharePoint Wiki versus OneNote for documentation? Do you use? Do either of you use the wiki? No, I can't say that I do. No, OneNote. I'll typically use OneNote for um, like grocery lists and other sorts of things, but uh, I do not go back to SharePoint for the wiki. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I rarely run into occasionally. I mean, there's people who are defenders of wikis. I've used it when I ran a workshop and I wanted it basically like a, you know, clickable table of contents down mm-hmm. to detail and, and built it out for that. But then what I did afterwards, I was taking notes in OneNote and captured, kind of duplicated all of that in OneNote and sent out a shared OneNote. <laughs> and the second time I gave that workshop, I deleted the wiki and just used the OneNote. You can build a nice cultured experience um, with the wiki, linked and everything. But, um, you know, if, if it might be overkill. Yeah. Well, if the way that the wikis were built and was almost a, you know, it was a um, community driven knowledge hub for an organization and in the Microsoft ecosystem and and companies that I've worked with, um, you know, Yammer has become that and it's a much better interface for going and capturing that, making it searchable. Um, just a lot better user experience. See how I used the experience again. It'll run Mm. in. It'll make sense folks. When you watch all two hours, (laughs) <laughs> don't do that hey there's like at least a dozen people that will watch the video <laughs> uh, yeah your yeah. time's precious yeah <laughs> now it's just uh, you know I'm just looking through here uh, the, there's uh, 21 comments and I don't see a single person that is defending wikis no they, I mean, they've got their place, but I think they've fallen out of favor or rather occupy a, a niche that um, it is what it is. It, it's funny, too, is that uh, when teams went live, um, you know, and, and by default, the wiki was there and people were like, why can't I delete this thing? Why can't I get rid of this? Yeah. And it was the number one request for a long time. And so they, they enabled that to make it optional, still had it there, but you could turn it off. And I, I, I and so now I don't even look anymore, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's off by default, you know, so it's, it's not there. Um, but this, this question is about, you know, the SharePoint wiki and wikis in general. But even then, I mean, honestly, I don't run into people that are using it anymore. No, not too much. People have a list, and then they'll have that kind of knowledge captured in uh, shared OneNote. Yeah, far more common. And that, for my for my money, more versatile at the same time. Yeah, good point. Uh, you know, I think we've tapped out on questions that are posted to the pages. Um, so if anybody has anybody that's watching the live stream, if you've got any questions you'd like us to, to handle, we got another 12, 15 minutes here. Happy to try to tackle those. Absolutely. And, uh, well, I'll do a quick plug while we're waiting to see if anybody has a question. Um, so tomorrow, so hopefully I'll have this, I don't know if I'm, I'll likely have this posted. It'll already be up and live, but, uh, uh, if anybody's watching the live stream, uh, we have the, um, collab talk tweet jam. So it's happening at, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, um, tomorrow morning. Uh, so Tuesday, the 30th. And we're discussing the state of Microsoft Teams. So that'll be interesting. So it's kind of an all up, like, you know, are you happy with Teams? What do you like about it? What are you, uh, what, what are you complaining about it? You know, what, what, what are the problems that you're having? What works? What doesn't work? And it's uh, sponsored by, of course, Tigraph that provides the analytics around that, but also the commsverse event. So the commsverse event is happening. The, uh, uh, the first or second week of July. I should probably know that. I guess technically not this week, next week. Um, but mm-hmm. Comsverse free event, all teams, 
and uh, should be jam packed. I think they've got like three thousand people registered for it. Um, cool. So online free event. Uh, definitely go take a look. And they're doing uh, multi geo uh, you know, geographies kind of so they get different time zones that are in that. Uh, so Good definitely deal. Go take a look at that. So you can go just do a search on comms verse online and should find that. Um, but yep. anyway, so we got the tweet jam tomorrow, and then I've got uh, a couple folks from Commsverse and from the community that will be doing the post tweet jam interview. And so that video will be live tomorrow afternoon as well. So should be interesting. Good deal. And if if for folks if, if you've never uh, participated in the tweet jams, it's on Twitter. That's uh, you don't have to be on the panel just to participate. There's a lot of people that just lurk. And listen in, um, but it, what sure. I like about it is that we—it's a one hour. It's very fast paced, so you have to hit refresh a lot on your browser. Um, that you do. Yes, it goes by very quickly. Uh, and I ask the the community seven questions over the course of the hour, and it is just a veritable cornucopia of responses. Uh, there's some great feedback that come out of these every single month. Um, so. Please just uh, jump into Twitter and come join. And we've got, of course, a great panel that is uh, participating. You go out to Buckley Planet and uh, look for the Tweet Jams and just do a search of the Tweet Jams. You'll find it a couple weeks back when we did the post. But, yeah, I'd love to have more community members there and asking questions and providing their thoughts and feedback and there's always a lot of microsoft people that are listening in so it's a great place to ask questions yes, and get feedback yeah that's where most of our lurkers are it's all the microsoft people lurk <laughs> that's that's true i suspect i'll probably participate in that are you on officially are you on on the panel i can't remember if you accept it or not um I don't know. Neither do I. Hang on. Honestly, I think so. I don't know. I'm, I've been big, kind of busy. So to go follow who's who's on it. What? So if you go out to Buckley Planet, and uh, I'll grab and copy that one. So the people in the let me look I've down. I've got the, the uh, panel item on my. It's on your calendar. Owl or calendar? Yes, you are on there, Sean. There you are. And Hal, are are you on there as well? Did you officially? I, I don't know if I did or if I didn't. I don't think so because I don't see it in my calendar, which won't prevent yeah. me from showing up. All right. Yeah. So don't see you on there. I can always forward it to you as well, Hal. Okay. I'll post it up. Here's the link for, for folks. And I'll post it over in the feeds. Yeah, good times. Those are a lot of fun. I enjoy doing those. It's been, this is our yep. ninth, ninth year of doing these. Wow. So since January of 2012. It's amazing, too, is that there are people that are participating in those that were in those first one, two, three months of doing these. Hmm. And I think over the the eight and a half years, I think I've only missed three, maybe four months where we've not hmm. held them. So, wow. Yeah, I try not to, to miss doing those because I, I do enjoy Quite them. Quite a track record. Yeah, there's a little bit of work involved getting those going, but uh, yeah. I think it's been a huge benefit to me. It's... I was talking with um, uh, with a uh, publisher uh, for a site I'm going to be doing some writing for, and um, and she's she said, uh, you know, where where are you getting your ideas for some of this? And I pointed at her two sources. I said, well, I do these monthly tweet jams. I said, if you're ever looking for ideas for what could we could have Christian write about, you can go look at some of the takeaways from these tweet jams. And get ideas. If you want the pulse, you know, talk about hand on the pulse of the community of what yeah. people are thinking about something. And the other one I said is these uh, office hours that we've been doing. Because I said there's literally a list of the questions that people are asking. And some it's other 
jokey stuff that we throw in there. Yeah. Yeah. Other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking maybe uh, next time, Sean, we should think about doing uh, wardrobe changes and have uh, show other <laughs> t-shirts. <laughs> Break it up. Wardrobe changes. <laughs> yeah. For the folks who haven't seen it, the shirt. <laughs> Too funny. Bad networking humor. Yes. And then, of course, I have the... It, it, who was I talking to that doesn't... Somebody who didn't recognize what this says, or what it is. I think my sister-in-law was like, well, that's the Aperture thing. I said, yeah, that's part of it. It's, it's the Aperture Labs. It's from the game Portal. Is it, it's used in other games, though, isn't it? Is it just Portal where it comes from? It's actually Aperture Hands Labs in in uh, Portal, but is it used in other uh, games, other Microsoft based? I'm trying to think. Does it appear anywhere in like Halo or something? I don't think so. But I don't know. I really don't know. Yep. All right. Well, we got four more minutes. What else do you guys want to talk about? So we don't have uh, any questions coming in, but <laughs> I'm looking. Well, I know what's going to happen to me. My kids are going to pull me down to play Minecraft. Oh, yeah. I think you mentioned something about that this morning, that game that no one else, none of us else play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to say that almost every time that I go over to my sister's um, across one town over and uh, her husband and and uh, her youngest son, um, it, it, like half the time I go over there, Minecraft is up on, on the screen. So... Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. I think he's he's pushing his son to uh uh my nephew to to code and go the tech route. So he's mm. a, he's a web developer and and uh so he he talks about you know the benefits of that and get the kids thinking about picking up some python. Yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot you can do with Minecraft. Yep. Obviously, I'm taking full advantage of that. <laughs> uh, I know, it's just not the same. You can't swing a sword and kill some orcs, Sean. You know, that's my thing. You can get zombies. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, and they're doing ray tracing. <laughs> what? Ray tracing. You, you are not. Oh my gosh. Let me. We have to correct this. What is this thing of which you were speaking? I will show you. All right. Let me find link. There we go. This is the proper video. Here's the link. Did 
Did you share it somewhere? Uh, I put it in the, um, oh, there you go. Huh. Yeah, sometimes hitting enter is that little that little bit of effort at the end. I've heard it helps. <laughs> creative tool. It is a game to get immersed in. It is anything that you would want it to be. Is that the video? Are you going to play it on screen? I'll share it over in the link. There we go. Well, we're at time. We'll let, we'll let people go in and so I shared it over in the uh, in the watch party, and uh, so I should put that out on my page as well. Yeah, but they've had uh, ray tracing to Minecraft. What is that? Ray tracing? Yeah. Um, it's a way of lighting scenes um, three-dimensionally that basically um, you're taking light rays and calculating the um, the angles and Various, uh, like the refraction you, off of it, like the, the the depending on the surface type, and yeah. If you watch the video, I mean, the video okay. will describe it for sure. Well, I'll watch but, it as soon as we're we're done. So, but um, yeah, it's 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 a way of doing um, realistic lighting and rendering in scenes. So so they added realistic lighting to a game in which everything looks pixelated. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. That's, that's what I want is accurate real world lighting to something that looks fuzzy like my glasses dropped off my face. Excellent. Right. <laughs> uh, Makes Minecraft beautiful. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, well gentlemen, uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll let people go and uh, check out the video link there. Um, we'll, of course, be back next Monday at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. And so uh, if you have any additional questions, you can continue to uh, you go out to uh, Facebook in the Office 365 community, community. or the Microsoft Teams Microsoft. community. You can post your questions there. You can send them to Sean, Hal, and myself, anybody else that participates. Um, contact us through the social channels. I'm hearing my voice, 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 voice. echoey. Hold on. Someone switched setups. <laughs> uh, but you can ask us questions through any of the social channels, and we'll uh, we'll we'll respond back to you, and and uh, you know, we'll likely oh, likely we will answer that. We won't <laughs> let make you wait a week to answer. We'll try and answer that. But feel free we'll to uh, to ping us with your questions, and we'll. Uh, We'll try to help you out. So, yeah. all right, I'm gonna go eat a late dinner. Good deal. Uh, all right, have a good Thank evening, you. gentlemen. It's just that, yeah, just that time. It happens. All right. Great talking to you. Talk to you guys later. Bye. You okay. bet.